Hey everybody, today I'm wrapping up my RX11 videos with my overall impression and to circle back to the video I posted about a month ago that asked if RX would win me back as a podcast editor. First off, let's recap the new features or the updates that will be appealing to the podcast editors and really anybody who works with dialogue. There were three of them, dialogue contour, dialogue isolate, and the repair assistant. I didn't test out the new dialogue contour since it's really not a plugin I use for podcast editing, but it does look like they made a pretty big improvement to the interface, and I can see how this will be a useful tool when working on bigger budget or higher profile projects where that level of work is warranted. But moving on, for us podcast editors, Dialog Isolate was the big announcement here. With RX11, Dialog Isolate is now included in RX Standard and includes reverb reduction. There are two modes here, good slash real time and best slash offline. RX Standard only gets the good mode, while RX Advanced gets access to both modes as well as a multi-pan control. In use, Dialog Isolate is definitely a new and improved version, doing a much better job of noise reduction, and the reverb reduction, it's a lot better than what was found in RX10's Dialog D reverb module, which unsurprisingly has quietly disappeared from RX11. But these improvements, they don't come for free, especially if you're planning to use them as a plugin. Dialog Isolate requires a lot of power, even when rendering in good mode. While testing out the RX11 plugins, I did run into issues running multiple instances in Hindenburg, which I've come to find out is not a multi-core app. This is a big mark against Hindenburg, but that's a topic for another day. I didn't test the render times in Logic, which is multi-core, but I did start getting errors on playback when I had three tracks all using Dialog Isolate in good mode on my M1 Max Max Studio. The render times in Hindenburg for a two-track 47-minute episode were 36 minutes 56 seconds in good mode and 46 minutes 33 seconds in best mode, so just barely faster than real time. While I'm not happy with these render times, I would accept them if the results were worth it. I don't really hear Dialog Isolate being any better than the other plugins that do the same thing. And it wasn't just me. Most of the comments in my video comparing RX11's Dialog Isolate to Supertone Clear, DX Revive, and VoiceX, they all agreed that Dialog Isolate is good, but not really a leader in noise and reverb reduction. I'll put a link to that video in the description in case you haven't seen it. Now, let's move on to the Repair Assistant, and I'll also include a link to that review down in the comments. Repair Assistant got a makeover, and they quietly added Dialog Isolate to it. It's a more basic version that only gives you control over the denoise and dereverb amount, but you also get basic EQ, DS, and D-clip, making, making it a powerhouse all-in-one module for those who want an easy mode, but it can also be useful for editors like me who want to streamline their editing chains. Just like Dialog Isolate, this plugin requires a lot of horsepower. Three instances started to cause problems in Logic, and this is unfortunate because I was hoping I could recommend this to people looking for one versatile plugin that doesn't break the bank. I reached out to Isotope's customer support to see if this is the expected behavior, and that's turned into a weeks long frustration. First, at some point over the last few years, Isotope, or I guess really Native Instruments, closed the support at isotope.com email address. But since I got the typical auto response with the title request received that showed the double hash plus type your reply 
or please type your reply above this line. In the preview, I ignored it. And a few days later, I went back to the email and found that it told me I could no longer reach tech support there. It directed me to the website. So I went to the website and spent a few minutes figuring out where to contact support. This took longer than it really should have, but I finally found and filled out the form and thought I was good. But the autoresponder never came. So a few days later, I tried again. And this time I did get the email confirmation and a few days passed and I received an email telling me, in order to get your request dealt with in the quickest possible manner, I've escalated it to one of our specialists who will contact you via email shortly. It's been two days since I got that email and almost a week since I sent, filled out the form and I still haven't heard from anybody. I miss the days when I could chat with Isotopes tech support on their website during business hours or send them an email after hours. I'm not a fan of companies who make it difficult for me to get help that requires a human. Overall, I feel the improvements were what Isotope needed to keep up with the competition, but that's all they did. Isotope is no longer the industry leader it has been. They seem to be playing catch up now. I posted a poll on YouTube. It only got 13 responses, so it's by no means a large sample size, but 77% responded unfavorably to RX-11. 23% felt it cost too much, 15% have moved on, and 38% have no reason to upgrade. RX-11 should be an appealing upgrade for anyone who's still running RX-8 or maybe even RX-9, but I can't see much reason to upgrade from RX-10 unless you don't have a noise and reverb plugin you like better than Dialog Isolate and you're okay with the render times. And I can't recommend RX-11 to anyone who plans to use Dialog Isolate or Repair Assistant regularly as a plugin. This would have been my ideal use case. They just aren't ready as plugins. I hope they further optimize them I have a feeling we might have to wait until next year for a fix in RX-12. I do have to take a moment to echo what I've seen online. A lot of people commenting about the so-called loyalty pricing for the RX-11 upgrades. I can't remember for certain, but the prices seem in line with what I remember them always being. But it is a tough ask to charge the same amount for each release when you move to an annual release cycle and offer less each year. And then to call it loyalty pricing, that's kind of the final insult here. For someone like me who owns the everything bundle or the equivalent from Isotope, Plugin Alliance, and Native Instruments, at least as of 2022, all of that, and I only save $100 on upgrading to Advanced, FabFilter has a nice loyalty program, and I know a few others that have a progressive discount where you get a bigger discount with each product you own. And while I'm at it, I found out that Isotope has changed its demo period from 30 days to 14. Just another example of Native Instruments taking away what Isotope was doing well. So to answer your question I posed last month, Will Isotope win me back? It doesn't look like it. They haven't done anything to keep me as a happy client. My experience from the cost of the upgrade to the poor performance of the plugins to the frustrations of getting tech support, all of this is pushing me away as a customer. I was always loyal to Isotope because they did things right. They always seemed to be leading the pack and they had great customer support. Tara and I have been using RX since RX5 or RX6. On the other hand, I've always liked Native Instruments plugins, but I've never been a fan of the company. I was hopeful that they would let Isotope keep doing their thing, but it's clear to me that Isotope is now being run by Native Instruments. 
which is being run by a private equity firm. And nothing ever good comes from that for the customers. I don't like doing reviews like this because I know a lot of good people have put a lot of hard work into making RX-11. But I do have to be honest about my feelings towards the product and the company. And that's just making it tough for me to end this video. So I think I'm just going to end it here. Thank you for watching. And please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'll talk to you next time.